Well, I really appreciate the introduction and as well as the uh, making sure you guys are paying attention. I heard you guys getting reprimanded there a little bit, so just kidding. Um, I want to thank Lindsay, uh, first of all, just for um, inviting me to this. This is a really uh, unique opportunity because, uh, as she mentioned, our, our uh, branding agency, our offices are right across the street. If you could just go down the street here, um, we're just uh, steps away. And it's been really neat to see Hotel Vandevort kind of take shape over the years. And I know that uh, IDM has played a huge part in that. And it's been just a pleasure to kind of see that take shape in my own hometown here. Uh, being a native of Springfield, it's uh, just made me feel uh, proud to be a part of uh, this city even more than I already am. Um, so just thank you again, Lindsay, and uh, thanks for having me. Uh, so first I want to tell you guys just a little bit about who I am and just share a little bit about me. Uh, so these are my, this is my family, first of all. I'm a proud father of a six-year-old girl. Her name is Avery. And a little four-year-old rambunctious boy named Elias. And that's my beautiful wife right there. And she's actually in the back supporting me here. So round of applause for her. <laughs> um, and uh, it's because of them that I do what I do. And um, it's, you know, the passion that I have for my agency really extends to the passion that I, and the love that I have for my family and showing them um, that I'm, I'm there for them and that I can support them. Um, this is another shot of them. Uh, you can see me and my daughter are goofballs together. Um, she's more like me and I think Elias is more like my, my uh, wife. <clears throat> this is my, uh, the office here. Uh, Dustin Myers is the partner, another partner here at Longitude. And, uh, uh, these are a couple of our clients here, as well as some business partners. They're clients and business partners both, but I'm um, just showing you some of the team there. Uh, I love to read. These are some of the books that I've read over the last year. I recommend uh, some of these to you guys as well. Um, specifically, if you haven't read it already, Setting the Table by Danny Myers. It's kind of a, a staple of the hospitality industry. I highly recommend that, as well as Be Our Guest by Disney. Um, they just talk, go into, into great depth about how they've created incredible experiences um, for all their resorts and all their properties. It's just an, an incredible book. Highly recommend that. And last week, I was just telling Lindsay about this. We had the pleasure of going surfing. This is my first time surfing. Uh, you can see I have the biggest board possible um, with the soft top because I don't know how to surf. And uh, Dustin and I had about an hour before we, could, we needed to go to uh, get, hop on our flight, so we decided to spend that hour surfing, and it was just a great time. And so, there's just some, I like to get outdoors, and the Ozarks especially is a great place to do that. And so, I just wanted to share a little bit about me there. So, I'll tell you a little bit about Longitude also. Um, just to give you a little recap of why we do what we do. We believe it's plain wrong to pour your blood, sweat, and tears into your business, only to see it stagnate or fail because you're unable to communicate or connect with your customers in a way that they can clearly understand and appreciate. And that's why we do what we do at Longitude. Everything comes back to great communication. If you can communicate with someone um, on a human level, then you're always going to see better results than if you are communicating with confusion. So we wanna make sure that we're helping our clients do that. Uh, as Lindsay mentioned, we're a hospitality branding and experience design agency. Uh, we believe that branding, and, and we're going to get into this today, how branding can really impact every area of, of your business. It's not just a matter of a logo, pretty designs. Um, it's really an all-encompassing, comprehensive way to, to just change the way that you do business. And we'll get into some of those details today. Again, uh, Longitude is ran by uh, two partners, myself and Dustin Myers. Dustin founded it back in 2010. And um, over the years, we've kind of grown into this niche of hospitality. It didn't start that way. Um, it started really just as a graphic design studio um, in its early days. And over time, we realized that we were getting a handful, uh, Dustin was getting a handful of restaurant clients here and there. And he was beginning to see how in the hospitality industry, there's so many ways that a brand can um, touch various points of a business, and especially in the hospitality industry. Uh, more, you know, we were doing brands for, you know, dentist office and lawyers and um, things like that. And, and you can only have so many touch points as a brand um, for those. So the hospitality industry is really unique in that there's so many different touch points, so many ways you can impact the guest experience. Um, our flagship offering and services are branding, communication, and design. That's kind of the, the, the spoke of the wheel, so to speak, of what we do. But we also offer a lot of different services beyond that. Um, from marketing to repositioning to 
um, you know, actual space design, interior design, things like that. Um, our flagship process we call Brain GPS, and uh, this is really the linchpin in everything that we do. It's, um, it's just as it says here, it's a guided process that brings alignment and clarity to your internal vision, external messaging and growth strategy, helping you marry your marketing and your business operations under a singular focus. Again, that's, that's how uh, branding is so unique in developing a business is because it's not just um, the logo, it's not just marketing efforts, it's really all encompassing. So we host these workshops in our offices. Um, these are just some shots of our offices. If you get a chance, if you want, if you have time, I know you guys have uh, your cocktail hour after this, I'm the only thing between you guys and that, so I'll try to be quick. Um, but if you get a chance and you want to, today or tomorrow, feel free to stop in and say hi. Um, and we host workshops in our conference room there and go through a lot of um, big and deep thinking with our clients. And I already touched on why hospitality. Um, and so um, I just want to say again, like, I I'm just really honored to be here. I like, this is kind of a dream come true as far as speaking at the Hotel Vandevort. Um, I've always wanted to be involved with the Hotel Vandevort in some way, and I'm finally getting that chance. So thank you for that. Um, so these are some of the brands that we've worked with in hospitality. Um, we do, again, we do mostly branding and design and communication. So these are just some examples of how um, the hotels we've worked with and been able to help them develop these pieces of collateral, uh, marketing pieces, um, messaging, and positioning as well. Um, we've had the pleasure of working with even outside of hotels. Uh, we work with, this is a campsite in, in Arkansas. It was a really fun project to be involved in. We help them create a lot of different um, marketing pieces as well. Uh, Camp Long Creek is, is by Big Cedar Lodge. That was another fun one to work on, kind of unique. Uh, Hazeltine Estate is another local brand here. They do event spaces. Um, just a lot of different ways. This is a, a more recent one as well. We we're uh, on the restaurant side of things. We were really honored to be a part of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Um, their Las Vegas restaurant experience, uh, kind of translating the Canton, Ohio experience. If you guys have ever been to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, it's really unique and cool. But um, we're helping them translate that to a restaurant experience, so it's been fun to be in involved with that. And then there's a number of other restaurants. Just to kind of give you a showcase of the clients we've worked with. We've partnered with owners and operators of uh, brands such as these, and it's just been a great journey. Um, I just joined as a partner a little over a year ago, actually, and so I'm, I'm really um, just thankful that I got to, got to do business with Dustin and kind of join him and, and uh, take Longitude to the, to the next level. Um, also part of what we do at Longitude, we're very, very partnership-minded. Even if we're not a client of ours, we want to make sure that we're Provide, we're always leaving people with value and content and resources. So these are some of the free resources we have on our website, uh, just a couple ebooks that we've written. Um, we're also in the process of uh, putting together a podcast, which will hopefully launch early next year, called Future Hospitality. And uh, we have a book in the process, an actual physical book in uh, the process as well. And again, it all goes back to this. Uh, we just think it's wrong for people. We see so many businesses even beyond hospitality failing because they're unable to clearly communicate with people. So that's what everything that we do, it always comes back to that. <clears throat> Bottom line, uh, better communication equals better experience. So um, I want to pause and just uh, do a little something fun here before we get started into the meat of it. Um, if you guys could, let me see if I can get this going. Oops. All right, if everyone could go to pull out their phone or laptop or whatever and go to uh, menti.com and type in this, uh, this code here, 34922. And we're going to do a little uh, just quiz here to see, see how up to date you guys are with the hotel industry and trends. Should be pretty fun. We have a little gift too for the winter, so uh, if you guys are competitive, you can really get into it. We'll get to see everyone's funny names as well if you put something funny. Mm -hmm. So we'll go ahead and wait for everyone to get joined here. And also these are 
just so you guys know, the extra competitive people in here, these are scored on how quickly you answer too. So if you answer it quicker than everybody else, you'll get higher points. Giving you guys all the secrets. All right, got 23, 24. How many people are here? 28 or 29. Okay, so we're close. Okay. All right, I think we're good to go. All right, is everybody ready? Everybody good? Okay, here we go. First question coming up. Look at your phones for the question. Between 2009 and 2017, which travel and hospitality category experienced the largest compound annual growth? Cruises, airlines, restaurants, or hotels? Throwing, starting off softballs here. All right, let's see, hotels. Yep, all right. Sorry whoever picked restaurants. <laughs> all right, let's see here. In general, all sectors of the US travel and hospitality industry have recorded growth in, in between 2009 and 2017. The hotel industry won with 6%, cruise 5.2, airline 4.6, car rentals 4.6, and restaurants only 4.4. So congrats to everyone. Let's see who's in the lead right now. Vacuum cleaner, cleaner, okay. Let's see. Seth is the best. Who's Seth? Yo. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Looks like uh, vacuum cleaner's in the lead. Sweet. All right. Next question. Here we go. What percentage of global travelers expect travel service providers to deliver sustainable travel choices? 24. 38, 71, or 85 percent? All right, let's see. 71, wow. All right, let's see. That's right. All right, let's see who's in the lead now. Uh oh. Oh, vacuum cleaner still taking it home. All right. What happened to, uh, yeah, dang. All right, let's see, next question. Seth, you need to pick it up, man. <laughs> Millennial travels, travelers will account for what percentage of global hotel guests by 2020? Wow, okay. Good guess. Yeah. 50% by 2020. There you go. Millennials, focus on the millennials. All right, let's see. Who's, who's uh, taking the lead? All right, vacuum cleaners, still in the lead. <laughs> who's vacuum cleaner cleaner? No one's vacuum cleaner cleaner. Okay. Oh, there we go. Nice. He's cheating somehow, I don't know. All right, next question. When it comes to influencing travel decisions, which is most important? Appealing imagery, good deals, informative content, or helpful reviews? All right, moment of truth. Oh, okay, kind of split here. Appealing imagery. Appealing imagery influences 54% of travel decisions. Good deals, 53%. Informative content, 50%. Helpful reviews, 44 And simple language, 35 All right, I think this is, this will be the last question. Let's see who's in the lead. Wow. There we go. Oh, vacuum cleaner. Wow. Corey, taking the lead. <laughs> All right, last question. Moment of truth. You guys ready? All right, here we go. Once checked in, what percentage of millennials connect to hotel Wi Fi? 85, 90, 95, or 98%? Mm -hmm. 
Whoa, 98, all right. Oh, oh. Man, I tricked you guys. Once checked in, 90%. There we go. All right, let's see who won. Amy and Heather. Oh, oh, Corey. Where's Corey? Corey? All right, we got a little gift for you, Corey, for uh, taking it home there. Good work. <laughs> All right, that was fun. Cool. All right. Um, We'll have some more gifts to give away, too. As, as we go through today, um, we're, there's going to be some interactive experiences and, and uh, worksheets and stuff like that. Thanks. What? That's ready for you. Oh, yeah. Oh, we've already handed them out, oh, actually. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Um, so um, that's just to encourage people to get involved in stuff as we go through some of these exercises. All right, so uh, we'll get started here. Um, I first want to start with a little story about why experience matters and just the importance of experience when we're thinking about the strategy of the experience. Um, one of the greatest joys, as I mentioned earlier, is my kids. And if any of you guys have kids, how many of you have kids in the room? Okay. So um, as my kids are getting older, they're getting involved with more extracurricular activities. They're, they're doing more things, you know, ballet, gymnastics, um, choir performances, things like that. And inevitably, in the Wells household, uh, the first thing, whenever we leave these performances, uh, both my kids start yelling, let's go to Andy's, let's go to Andy's. And if you don't know what Andy's is, um, it's a very, very popular frozen custard uh, place here in Springfield. And my kids just love going to this place. And early on, um, when we first started uh, going to Andy's after these events, uh, we would try to fight it by saying like, well, we have some ice cream at home, you know, trying to be the frugal parents and, and uh, you know, We'd even try to, you know, even if we had Andy's at home, they still would want to go to Andy's. And um, I think that the reason that they want to go to Andy's is not because the ice cream is good. It's not because they like, they have a certain flavor there they like. Um, we could go to Walmart, we could go to any other grocery store, we could even buy Andy's and have it at our house and they still wouldn't want to go home. They would want to go to Andy's. And this is because I think the experience is what draws them in. It's the experience that they remember. It's the experience that they want. And that's really how humans, we as humans live our life. We live it through experiences, whether it's good experiences, whether it's bad experiences, um, whether it's ones we want to remember, whether it's ones we want to forget. These are all experiences that make us who we are. Um, humans live our lives through the experiences. And so that's why, what makes experiences in hotels, um, just like any other um, industry really, hotels especially, are, uh, creating a guest experience that people will remember and want to be drawn to. Um, experiences in, inform our perceptions, they influence our decisions, they guide our desires, and they change our direction. They're very powerful experiences. Are You guys probably even have experiences, good and bad, from your childhood, um, even from probably this week, just traveling here and being here. There's probably experiences you're having that you're going to remember. Experiences make us who we are, and they really just make us human. And so that's why we're going to be focusing on today how to have a strategy around experiences, how to build a strategy around that. And so we'll go ahead and get started in, into what that looks like and what that means. So first I want to talk about kind of the status quo of the industry, um, where we're at, where we've come from, and kind of assess about where we're going to be going as in the hotel industry. Right now, guest expectations are higher than ever. Uh, there's so much competition. There's so many options now. Um, the hotel industry especially has grown um, in a lot of different ways, just the lodging industry in general, the options that people have. Um, so their expectations have risen with that. That's why positioning and differentiation are more, than, more important than ever as well in the hotel industry, just hospitality in general. Um, word travels faster now than ever. Uh, it's easier than ever to just send someone a text message, to leave a review on Yelp or TripAdvisor Trip or any number of uh, different platforms. Uh, word can spread like wildfire. There's also been the rise of third-party travel and lodging businesses, you know, the Airbnbs, kayaks. Um, all these are, are folks, even now Airbnb, more in the past uh, couple years, have been focusing on building experiences for people rather than just 
giving them a place to, to sleep at night. So with, with the status quo of the industry being that, being so competitive, being so flooded, having so many options, there's also still a, an incredible opportunity um, to take advantage of with get, when it comes to guest experience. When you focus on guest experience, your customer satisfaction is gonna skyrocket, especially if you're doing it right and you have a strategy behind it. And this is important because if you can increase your customer satisfaction, um, if you increase it even by um, make, making a total cust sorry, a satisfied customer, you can increase it by two and a half, you can't see that hardly at all, can you? 2.6% in case you can't see that. Uh, or 2.6 2, 2 times as much revenue generated from a somewhat satisfied customer to a dissatisfied customer. And if you can really satisfy them and give them a good customer satisfaction experience, it's 14 times greater than a dissatisfied customer. So that just shows right there the importance of satisfying your customer, giving them a great experience. Also, customer loyalty goes up. And customer loyalty is really important, because, as you know, because um, acquiring a new customer costs seven times more than just maintaining an existing one. So you're going to be spending a lot more time, a lot more money trying to get new customers in the door than you would if you just spent it creating wonderful, memorable experiences for people. And if you can keep them as a, as a guest, as a customer, it's going to be a great, um, great for your bottom line, really. Also, customer advocacy goes up. Um, this is extremely important, and if you think about it, um, uh, people don't, uh, as the stat says, 84% of people don't trust advertisements anymore. And if you think about it, if, some, if you saw an ad for a hotel or if you saw an ad for anything, really, and versus if someone were to walk up to you, a friend, and say, man, I stayed at this wonderful hotel. It was just the best experience of my life. You should totally check it out. You're way more likely to take the advice of your friend. So it's, if you can create those experiences that those people remember and want to share with their friends, um, it's just going to be you know, in incredible for your, your marketing efforts. And again, uh, consumers just really expect more. 33% of Americans say they'll consider switching companies after just this, a single instance of poor customer service. So that's why uh, customer experience and focusing on that is really important too. You don't want to be losing customers for things that are easily av avoidable. Also, again, going back to competition, you want to make sure you're standing out from competitors and, and guest experience is a great way to do that. Uh, it's really, I think it's the new competitive battleground. You know, um, years ago, you know, hotels and, and hospitality were focusing on features and benefits as their differentiators. You know, who has the nicest pool, who has the best, uh, you know, most comfortable beds, who has the, the be biggest, um, you know, bathrooms or what have you, whatever it is. It was all features and benefits oriented. But guest experience is kind of the new battlefield, I think, for, for the hospitality industry. Guest experience is now the main focus of 68% of marketers. And I'm, I'm guessing that's because, uh, just like those stats said a moment ago, uh, you're gonna be saving a lot more, getting more bang for your buck if you're focusing on experience versus just trying to always run advertising efforts and marketing efforts to try to bring new customers in the door. You're gonna be, it's a lot more, more impactful to keep those loyal customers. So um, for our first exercise here, uh, we're just gonna, you guys have sheet. You should have some sheets in front of you um, for exercise number one. I want you guys to just kind of evaluate and um, think through the impact of proving your guest experience. And I want you to maybe just spend a couple minutes here thinking about these three questions. What's in it for my hotel? What's in it for, for improving the guest experience for my hotel? What is in it for my staff if I improve my guest experience? And what's in it for you, for me? If, if you were to improve your guest experience, what impact will that have on you personally? So uh, we'll just uh, take a moment here. If you guys have any uh, questions or clarifications on these questions too, just raise your hand and either myself um, or Dustin or um, Chris will come help you. Need some like Jeopardy music or something. And as we go, just so you guys know, as we go through these exercises, um, you might not be able to answer everything perfectly, um, and you might have some homework um, after the fact too. So this is just really more um, starting points for you guys to consider. And then as you go through it, you want to make sure that you're you take it back, maybe work some with your team as well through these questions. And uh, and yeah, what's up, Chris? Does need a packet? A packet? Oh, it, does everyone have a packet? We 
We put them on the tables. Is anybody missing one? Okay, cool. We're good. And as you're as you're finished, or if you are done writing, you can just look up at me so I can kind of know that you're you're done. And uh, kind of as as we go through this process, you're going to kind of see a little bit more um, of the holistic approach that we take with our our clients when we're talking about branding and the experience and how it goes through. So it'll start to make sense as we go through this. <clears throat> All right. So uh, next I want to talk about the building blocks of a, a better guest experience. And I think that it really boils down to three key areas um, or key focuses. One, focus on detail. Two, focus on personalization. And three, focus on creativity. Um, when I say detail, it's an attention to detail that can't be found in a manual or a book or a YouTube video or what have you. Uh, it, needs, it can be inspired, however, by great working conditions and a genuine desire to help people. Um, this is a really important factor when you're, when you're talking especially about hiring staff for your property. Um, you know, in uh, the book Setting the Table by Danny Meyer, he even kind of alludes to the fact that you can't train hospitality, you can't train empathy, you can't train someone's desire to just genu genuinely want to help other people. So when you're, when you're looking at hiring staff, when you're looking at bringing people on your team, you want to make sure you're looking for people that have that just naturally, that natural gift for them. Um, it can, there's certain elements of just being attentive and aware that you can train um, just through processes, through training and whatnot, but um, you just need a really genuine attention um, to, or genuine desire to help people. So detail is the first one. Personalization, so uh, birthdays, anniversaries, and other special occasions, they're great opportunities to personalize a guest experience. And there are plenty of other ways to customize their visit every day. You just have to be looking for them. Uh, we kind of call these uncovering stones, so to speak. So always looking, always being aware of your guests, their needs, who they are, and um, looking for opportunities to personalize their experience. You know, maybe someone walks in during check-in and you see they're wearing a, a sports cap, a sports, you know, a football cap or something. And, um, you know, you kind of take that as a, maybe an opportunity to engage with them on that conversation. Maybe you make some recommendations, you know, of a sports bar nearby or things like that. And you're personalizing the experience to them at that moment. Um, also, just, you know, just customer data that you might capture, um, you know, about their birthdays, anniversaries, being able to, to have that easily accessible and being able to actually act on that is a, a great way to, to think through personalization. Creativity. Customers have expectations for what most hotels will and won't do. So we need to identify what these expectations are and then make a habit of going above and beyond in interesting and delightful ways. So those three things, detail, personalization, and creativity, I think are kind of the, the core building blocks of creating a, and developing a better guest experience. Now ways to do that um, are kind of through this thinking and getting in, inside of the customer's shoes, um, getting in their mind, understanding what they're looking for, what they want from you. And so I think this kind of com comes down to about five different questions, um, or not questions, but statements um, and expectations from the customer. First, they, um, well, I call this the experience of me, quote unquote. And so if you're thinking of the, cu of the customer as someone's like, I want this, you know, this is me, you know, we can kind of get a little selfish sometimes in our mind as far as expectations. But you want to be thinking that way because if you can think on your customer's level as far as they're, what they're expecting and wanting, it's going to help you tailor those experiences to them. So first, they want you to know them. So this statement of know me. Um, this is where you can track guest insights and get to know them better. You can, again, create some personal profiles around them and behaviors, maybe things that they like, maybe things they don't like, um, you know, whatever it is. And, you know, an example of that, uh, you know, if you have different guests, maybe one guest is traveling for business and they're here during the week. Their uh, expectations, and they want to be known as that, they, want, you know, they might want free Wi-Fi, or if you don't have free Wi-Fi, most places do. They might want, um, you know, access to, um, you know, maybe they want a room with a desk versus a room that might not have a desk. Maybe they want have specific needs. Um, you know, maybe it's a family traveling on the weekend, and they want... Um, you know, things for their kids, you know, amenities for their kids that they would enjoy, you know, a free continental breakfast or a pool or things like that. Um, and just being able to tailor an experience to them and know what, what things they're going to want. 
Um, customizing that experience to suit the guests can increase customer satisfaction by 23%. So um, knowing, knowing it, knowing your guest and knowing how to customize an experience based on that knowledge um, is, is a great way. And if we, I remember if we go back to um, the stats that we sh showed earlier, um, increasing customer satisfaction can have a tremendous impact on your revenue and your bottom line as well. The second point, engage me. Uh, this is going back again to um, encouraging and equipping your staff to be more aware and more attentive to your guests. So again, uncovering stones, uncovering knowledge, getting to know, being, being aware and present with your guests. Um, you know, you don't want people on your team that are just maybe on their phone a lot or um, you know, just kind of spacey and not paying attention to, uh, to the details. So if you can engage your, your customers, that's gonna be a huge uh, benefit to you. More engagement during the check-in, for instance, increases the likelihood of a guest sharing a positive review by 29%. Um, and these are just a lot of numbers. I'm just trying to get to the, to the core of, of the importance of guest experience. I think a lot of people, as I said, focus a lot on marketing efforts, a lot on advertising, and the guest experience is kind of an afterthought um, from a strategic standpoint. Next, delight me. Um, you know, you want to have a complete overview, kind of a snapshot of your guest, and through that, through the knowledge that you're creating, you're, you're allowing, you're creating these personalized experiences, and when guests have a personalized experience, oftentimes they're delighted. So they want to be surprised, they want to be delighted, they want these unique experiences. I think Disney does a great job of this. Um, if, has anyone ever been to Disney here? Like Disney theme park or resort or anything? If you've been there, um, you, you would probably understand you know, the importance of how, or the importance that they've put on the guest experience. They make everyone feel very accommodated, very known, very engaged. Um, so they do a great job of that, and I think that's what guests are wanting, um, especially in the coming years. And, and alluding to this as well, 71% of millennials are expecting this. And that's why I think it's gonna grow over the coming years. Again, by 2020, 50% of travelers are gonna be millennials. And if 71, a huge majority of them are gonna be expecting these types of Delight, ex, delightful experiences and experiences like this. It's gonna be hugely impactful for people that are ahead of the curve on that. Next, empower me. Um, this, is a, this is a really um, impactful one, I think, because we actually were uh, talking with one of our clients. We have a hotel we work with in, in Iowa, and um, we went up there for one of our initial visits with them, and I, talking to the owner, I asked him, you know, as we're, we're getting ready to check in, we were driving up that day. And I asked him to make sure that the, the front desk didn't know who I was because I didn't want them to like treat me in a, in a way that they wouldn't treat anybody else. Um, so I, I arrive at this uh, cool little town. I've never been there before. I'm checking in and the, the lady was really great. She was helpful. Um, and, and I start asking her during the check-in process, I say, uh, you know, is there any like unique experiences here in your town, I've never been here before, you know what, um, you know, is there any place to eat, anything to do, anything to see? And she kind of just looked at me with a blank stare, and she was like, well, uh, there's a Applebee's, I mean, I don't, you know, she's like, I don't really go out and do anything, like, I don't know, like, and so she recommended Applebee's uh, while I was there. And so um, it kind of left a little bit, you know, to be wanted, I guess. So I went back to my room, and I just hopped on Google, did a quick search, and I found this really cool place to eat and it was a great experience and it was one of those moments where um, I didn't feel empowered as a guest to kind of go experience the local scene, the local vibe and get to know, get to see something that I wouldn't otherwise see. And so a way to empower people is to just offer them, being proactive about making recommendations, making offerings, um, suggestions of activities and kind of based on the information you've learned about them. So if she had kind of picked up that I was new to the area and that I was kind of maybe a foodie a little bit and I wanted to go experience something else. And if she had a way to act on that, I mean, she must just like Applebee's, I don't know. But, uh, you know, that would have been a great opportunity to empower me as a guest. And I think there's a lot of missed opportunities in that, um, especially in the check-in experience. It's a, lot, a lot of times it's very just um, dry and, you know, give the card and then they go check in and there's nothing there. I think if you can train your, get your staff to be able to um, uncover these stones, be looking for opportunities, be attentive, be aware. Uh, this is going to lend to the experience. Luxury guests especially are looking for these types of offerings. So 
33% are more likely to expect these types of interactions. You think of brands like, obviously, the big ones like Ritz-Carlton and things like that. Um, luxury guests are looking for that. The last one here is hear me. Guests want to be heard. Um, you guys probably know more than anybody when a guest is upset about something, um, you know, things can get pretty heated sometimes. And uh, I think it comes down just even beyond just the, the hotel industry and the experiences that guests have there. I think just as humans, I think we want to be heard whenever we feel offended or we feel like some, some unjust injustice has been done to us. Um, so if you can just make them feel heard, uh, I think that goes a long way. And I think these, um, the stats support it. Uh, when your team makes a mistake, view it as an opportunity to recover and do the right thing and recover well. Um, you know, a lot of people might drag their feet. A lot of people might uh, play the other card of like, well, you, you know, uh, you did this, so we did this, and blah, blah, blah. You don't want to get into those arguments. You want to just fix the problem and, uh, and you know, do your, uh, hear your guests, basically. So guests are 40% more likely to share a positive review if a problem is fixed promptly. So even if you've, you've messed up royally and you've done something wrong, um, whatever it is, if you can just fix it quickly and uh, take care of it and solve the problem, you're 40% likely to get a positive review. So for our, are you guys doing okay by the way? Everyone okay? Okay. <laughs> All right, um, so for our next exercise, I just want you guys to be thinking about these five areas, knowing, engaging, delighting, empowering, and hearing. And maybe just think through, you know, am I falling short in any of these areas? Are there, um, you know, things that maybe I need to improve on or ideas you might have that come to your mind as I was talking about how maybe you could, you know, improve it with your staff or with, um, you know, processes or anything. Just kind of think through some of these five areas. Again, um, knowing is just kind of un uncovering those stones, looking for opportunities to learn about your guests, engaging them. Um, delighting them, providing just a delightful experience, empowering them, giving them recommendations and offerings, and then hearing them, making sure that they're, um, they feel heard whenever something's messed up or gone wrong. And uh, so just give these some thought. Uh, we'll take a couple minutes here and let you guys kind of think through that. Uh, we're, we're gonna move, so we've kind of discussed the importance of, of guest experience and um, the building blocks of that, the opportunity that, that comes with that. And we, we all, I think, are on the same page, hopefully, that guest experience is really something you can't avoid, you can't neglect, and it needs to be the focus. Um, now I want to discuss, uh, we've discussed even a few tactics, a few ideas, and you've probably even written down a few tactics and ideas um, and, and things like that on the, on the paper on that last exercise. Um, but really, uh, what we do at Longitude is we believe, really, that tactics without a strategy to support it will oftentimes fail. And what happens is a lot of people, you know, uh, read a lot of books, they go to a lot of conferences, they consume a lot of content, they learn as much as they can. And it's really just kind of a matter of, you know, just trying whatever is popular, whatever is trendy, whatever is new, whatever focus, and you're kind of just grasping the straw is trying to, to uh, improve your guest experience, improve your hotel, improve, you know, all these different metrics. Uh, but we want to help our, our clients all the time stop grasping at straws. We want them to give them a strategy uh, that they can kind of rely on and fall back on um, to make sure that they're, they're making smart decisions, they're investing their money wisely and things like that. So the, really the core of this um, is understanding who you are. And when I say who you are, I not only mean who you are personally, but also who you are at, in your property, at your hotel, your staff, your culture, who you are, um, the value that you can offer what makes you unique, and also who your audience is. Um, you know, there's uh, a lot of ways that you can do this. We have our own process that we kind of walk through, and we're going to cover some of those pieces um, today in some of these exercises. But um, we accomplish this through what we call a brand strategy. And when I say brand, a lot of people might have certain definitions of what a brand is. I kind of alluded to this earlier, um, that your brand is more than just a logo, it's more than just some colors, it's more than some marketing efforts, you know, things like that. Um, the way that we define a brand is it's not your logo, it's not a tagline, it's really your reputation. Just as everybody in this room has a reputation, um, we all individually have our own reputations. Um, your brand, your hotel, your property has a reputation. 
And your brand or your reputation, as we define it, is influenced by everything that you say, how you look, and what you do. And these three uh, things are really important, and they need to be in alignment. Otherwise, you're, you're going to risk having a weak brand, a weak reputation for your hotel, if any three of these are not aligned. You can kind of see it illustrated here, um, these, these three things, what you say, what you do, and how you look. If we think about it, um, if, if I were to, if you, say, if you say all the right things and you do all the right things, but you don't look the part and you don't look the right way, uh, you're gonna create a lot of confusion. You're gonna have a weak brand. So if I were to walk in here and I'm saying all the right things, you guys are just like loving it, clapping, and like, go Jeremy, go, you know. I'm doing all the right things, but I was wearing like, you know, uh, tank top and some swim trunks and you know, flip flops or something. You guys would probably be pretty confused, right? So uh, you wanna make sure that how you say, what you say, what you do and what you look, or how you look is aligned. If I were to say all the right things and look the right way, but I don't actually deliver and do the right things, then my reputation is gonna be harmed because I might say and look and, and play the part and do it all right, but if I'm not actually following up with actions and delivering on my promises, um, you know, my reputation is going to be harmed. I'm going to have a weak brand. And likewise, if I look the right way and I'm doing all the right things, but I'm not saying the right things, uh, it's going to create confusion too. People are going to be confused about what I represent. They're not going to be drawn into me. They're not going to be, um, it's just going to create a lot of confusion for your brand. So these three things are really important when we're talking about developing a brand um, and your reputation as a, as a property. So we want to help everyone create a great brand. So we're going to go over some of those uh, pieces today. Um, this is a great way to kind of visualize, again, um, we show this to a lot of people. We have this on our website too. Um, kind of just showing on the left, the confusion there. This is probably where, I mean, I don't know the exact numbers, but I would say probably 80 to 90% of businesses just in general, not just hotels, but businesses in general, fall into this area of confusion. And what this rep is representing here is each of those circles, each of those words are different touch points, different activities, different different approaches, different tactics that a business can do to just operate um, from an operation standpoint, from a marketing standpoint. And each one is you know, either outsourced to somebody or someone on the team is doing it. Each one has its own kind of a different spin on it. You know, someone has their own take on the brand and, and the messaging here. Someone has their own take on social media and how to handle that. Someone has their own take on you know, their website and their SEO efforts and things like that. So it's just kind of all over the place. There's no really cohesive, um, some, something that kind of binds it all together. So what we help uh, our clients create is what we call, again, a brand strategy. And that kind of that ties it all together in a, and acts as a filter for all of your activities, all of your tactics, all your strat or all of your uh, marketing efforts and operational efforts as well. Um, so when you have a brand strategy in place, which again, we're going to be walking you through how to create the foundation for a brand strategy here in a moment, um, you can kind of run each of these efforts through that, make sure you're making smarter decisions, spending your money in a better way, and, and making sure that you're training your staff appropriately. So the first part of building a brand strategy, and this is one of the, one of the initial exercises that we go through in our brand GPS process, is called uh, guiding principles. And you may be familiar with this more from like a core values or um, you know, whatever you want to call it. We call it guiding principles. Um, but really, it's determining above all else what is most important to you, what is most important to your team and your organization, and um, making, making note of that, really. A lot of people might have this in their mind as far as like the overall, you know, well, we believe in this and do this, but they haven't actually written it down and um, communicated that to their team. So these are values that you're not gonna waver on. They're values that you're fully committed to. And um, it can't just be sent sentiment either. It can't just be, something that you print out, put on a plaque and hang on a wall, uh, something, that you, something that you have in a, you know, develop in a conference room and then just kind of like put the paper into your file cabinet and never think about it ever again. You actually have to act these out and, and, and do these things, these guiding principles. Um, guiding principles, um, actually before I get to that, I want to tell a little story here too. That same client uh, in Iowa, the hotel client, we were guiding them through this, the brand GPS process, and we were talking about this, these guiding principles. And they had started to experience over the last probably five to seven years a lot of uh, trouble with the competition. Namely, there are two um, 
chains that had brand names that had come in recently um, just right down the road from them. And it was actually between them and the, the main highway where a lot of their, a lot of their guests and travelers would, would find them. And so it had really harmed their, their business. Their revenue had dropped pretty significantly. And so they were trying to figure out everything. They were grasping at straws again, trying to figure out everything that they could do um, to compete, to stand out. And so the problem was they didn't have any sort of guiding principles or any, any idea of who they were. And so everything that they were doing uh, was fairly in inauthentic, I think. And they, they recognized that as we were talking through this. You know, they were trying to um, say and do and, and look a certain way um, that wasn't really authentic to who they were. So we helped, we sat them down and, and we kind of guided them through the same process we're, we're talking about right now. And as we were going through that, they developed the, their three core guiding principles were this. One, keeping it simple. Um, they found that they were trying to implement a lot of different tactics, a lot of different um, approaches, technologies and whatnot in their hotel that was really just distracting them from delivering a better guest experience. It's almost getting in the way. Um, and so they wanted to kind of pull that back a little bit and keep things simple and make sure that they're focusing on what really matters, um, being present with the guest, being attentive to the guest. So that there's one aspect of, um, of learning more about your guests that can almost be distracting if you're, if you're implementing too many technologies or too many processes or too many you know, quality assurance type things with your staff. You wanna make sure that they still have the freedom to actually just engage on a human level with your, with your uh, guests. So that was one. Um, keeping it simple. Another was going the extra mile. Uh, they viewed it initially as a, a negative that they weren't a brand name. They thought that was a negative thing, uh, being locally owned. They had been there, I think, for, I think that they were celebrating like their 30th year anniversary in their, in their local area. And it had kind of been almost a negative thing when you talked to their team about it, like, you know, they weren't proud of their brand. Um, but we kind of helped reposition it in their mind and saying like, there's a lot of things that you as an independently owned hotel can do that a brand can't do. And there's a lot of things, a lot of flexibility you have there. So we kind of help them reframe it as a positive um, and allow them, they, they call it uh, going the extra mile. So they're going the extra mile to create these wonderful experiences. They're going out of their way, doing things that, you know, maybe a brand, branded hotel couldn't do. Um, also, their, their third guiding principle is just being local ambassadors. Again, that's going back, alluding back to like the engaging, um, empowering, knowing their customers. They wanted to be, um, that, that was one of the things that came out of my discussion with the owner about you know, my check-in experience, my personal check-in experience there. Um, you know, how can we engage? How can we get people involved in the local community? How can we ourselves be more involved in the local community? Um, really leaning into that, and using, they even ended up using that as part of their positioning as well, um, not only just the guiding principle. So um, guiding principles, th those three guiding principles for them allowed them to, one, have a clearer focus as a team. If they know that we're gonna keep it simple, that we're gonna be local ambassadors and that we're gonna go the extra mile, those three things above all else are most important to them. So other things might arise, other ideas might come up, but if they use those three pillars as their filter per se, then they know that they're always gonna be heading on their, the right direction that they want, they want to go. So um, it creates a common purpose for your team um, you know, it creates a clear focus on what is and what is not appropriate for your company. Um, and it creates kind of a rallying point for your team. Um, makes, in our experience at least, with the brands we worked with, it kind of makes people proud to be a part of that team because they have a clear vision of where, where you guys are going, what your purpose is, and things like that. Uh, it also can communicate purpose to your guests, not only just to your team, um, but to your guests. Um, it can be shown um, in, in a lot of different ways. You know, if you think of some of the best brands in the world that um, showcase this great experience, you know, I think of, um, the, obviously I, I brought up the Ritz Carlton earlier. Um, they're one of the best in the industry that can do that. Um, there's even like Chick-fil-A in the restaurant industry. If you think about Chick-fil-A's experience, um, they're always saying, what is it, they please and thank you? I don't know. They, they, they're just very accommodating. They make you feel seen and heard and known. And uh, I know that there's, Who's, okay, before we go anywhere else, Popeyes or Chick-fil-A? Has everybody, everybody heard about this? All right, if you're a Chick-fil-A fan, raise your hand. Okay. Popeyes? Oh, wow, okay. There we go. Yeah, if you guys, I, I don't know how many of you have heard of the new, the drama between uh, Popeyes and the yeah, chicken sandwich, but 
Um, yeah, all right. So, um, yeah, another great example is Disney. Again, that's another great example of just um, how their core values, and if you read through that book, Be Our Guest, um, they, get in, they even get into, I don't think they call them guiding principles, but it's the same concept. What is most important to them above all else, they, they follow the same principle. And it's really this idea of something that's forever pursued but never reached. You're always pursuing this thing. You're always striving to be um, for these guiding principles, um, but they're never quite reached. That means there's always something to improve. There's always something more you can do. Um, so uh, just be thinking about some of these things for yourself. Um, in our workshop, we'll, we'll, this is, our workshop's more guided, but um, this is, will at least act as maybe a starting point. These are just some words that we give to our clients um, to get their wheels spinning. This isn't a comprehensive list by any means. Um, but if you want to start here and maybe start thinking about some of these words that describe your team that you, can, you guys can kind of act as a rallying point for your, for your team and for your property to get behind, uh, we, we like to suggest that you either you have, end up with two or three. So you might check mark a lot, of the, a lot of different ones here, but you can narrow them down into two or three. Uh, you don't want like 10 different guiding principles or however many because at a certain point, if everything's important, then nothing's important. So. You want to make sure that the top, top two or three that you pick are ones that you'll, you won't waver on, that you'll stay focused on, and that you'll always be committed to. Um, so spend a couple minutes here if you would, and maybe just think through it. This will, this will be another example of one maybe you need to take back with your team as well. Um, if there's other members of your team you'd like to be included in making this decision, um, that, that would be really healthy, I think, too, um, to get more perspectives on it. But this will at least be a good starting point for the conversation. Your name's Becky? It is. Okay, cool. Uh, I saw your name tag, I'll just make sure. Um, yeah, I think that's great. I think one thing I would maybe uh, think about when you when you're use the word authenticity too, uh, this is another thing that we do with our customers, is make sure that we want to make sure our guiding principles are always actionable and always actually everyone knows what it means. So if you think of it in the context of um, maybe, there, maybe you have an employee that uh, maybe is doing something uh, that they shouldn't be doing, and you have to kind of talk, have a chat with them, and you say, you know, uh, John, I, I think you're just not being authentic, you know, I think you need to be more authentic. So like to him, like authentic, authenticity or authentic might mean one thing, to you it might mean something else. So um, I, would, I would maybe add to that, and if it, anybody else can add to, to theirs as well, add some like actionable like definitions to that too. So what does it mean to your, your hotel, to your business to be authentic? You know, um, Dustin, do we have, do you ha can you think of any examples of like a brand that like we helped kind of flesh out the, uh, sorry to put you on the spot by the way. Um, uh, of a brand, well, I'm trying to think of an example of a, a brand that had like a kind of a vague um, core value or a guiding principle and we kind of had to help them flesh it out a little bit further. Like what does that actually mean to you? And you don't have to find an example, Dustin, if you can't, but just be thinking about, um, you know, how can, I, how can you put some teeth to that? Um, you know, what is off, and making sure that your team understands what, authentic, what it means to be authentic in terms of how you've defined it. Um, thank you for sharing, Becky. Uh, hopefully that gave you guys a, a good overview of kind of what guiding principles are and, and how to be thinking about them. Again, um, I would highly recommend taking this to your team back home as well and kind of discussing that with, with them and get their thoughts on it as well. I'm sure they'll have some good uh, perspective and insight there too. Next, I wanna talk about positioning. Uh, positioning is extremely important. I think a lot of people maybe are confused about what positioning is. Um, and so the way that we define positioning is it's a unique position that you occupy in your marketplace and it's as it's understood by your customers. Um, so it's not just something that you say you are, it's what your customers say you are. And so uh, you can have a strategy around this positioning, around your position. A lot of people don't really have a strategy around their position, so they let kind of the free market decide what their position is for them, which can be a very dangerous place uh, for any brand to be at. Um, so you wanna make sure you have some ideas around how to position yourself in the marketplace. Positioning, I think, where a lot of people get confused is between positioning and differentiation. Um, these are two very valuable strategies to have in place and be thinking about, but they're, they're also very different. Differentiation is more of a focus on specific features and benefits. 
um, and it's what your hotel has to offer against the competition. So if we think back to what I mentioned earlier about, you know, does your hotel have a pool and theirs doesn't? Does theirs have a fitness center and yours doesn't? Does yours have, you know, this unique thing and theirs, you know, theirs doesn't? Um, be thinking about these points of differentiation and these points of differentiation can influence your position, um, but it's not, those, those alone are not your position in the marketplace. These are just differentiations. Um, there's also the idea of tangible versus intangible differentiations. So I mentioned a few tangible ones like a fitness center, like a pool. There's also intangible differentiation. So, um, you know, how does, um, during the check-in experience, how does your uh, front desk make the person feel? Are they attentive? Are they aware? Are they uncovering stones? Are they talking? Are they empowering? Those can be a differentiation as well. Um, you know, uh, when, they, when someone first walks in your door and they're, um, you know, the smell in the lobby. That was, this is the funny thing about Hotel Vandevoort. Uh, Dustin and I, uh, we come here pretty frequently in the lobby and we'll, we'll grab a coffee or eat or uh, work from here sometimes. And um, every time we come in, Dustin has been always, and I myself have always been impressed with the smell of the lobby at the Hotel Vandevoort. Like, how do they get this amazing smell? And so I think Dustin finally asked someone, I forget who he asked, but we found out what the scent was and they were, you guys were working with the company to get the scent or whatever. And so we ended up getting that same scent for our office space, <laughs> just because we enjoyed it so much. So, um, but that can be a point of differentiation. How, you know, when you enter into a, a room, the smell that you get, the, the ambience of the lighting, you know, how you feel, um, how you make someone feel is really an intangible point of dif differentiation as well. <clears throat> Oops, sorry, jumped ahead. Um, so, yeah, so these differentiations, you know, they can lead to helping you define your kind of a value proposition for your business. And when you, whenever you start to think through these unique uh, positions that you can take in the market, what's maybe an area that um, doesn't have anybody else competing for that, um, that can be a great position to take up. And I'm going to share some questions here in a moment. They're on your worksheets as well. Um, but a, a great example also of the power of positioning um, a client we have up in Chicago, they're a restaurant client, and it's called uh, Slice Factory. You, I think you might have seen some of the branding that we did for them earlier, but uh, they have about eight locations in Chicago. And uh, I think it was, they engaged with us first probably like three or four years ago probably. Um, and when they first came to us, uh, we were in a, in a strategy meeting with them and we were trying to figure out what position they could hold in the market that no one else could. And we were finding that in, in Chicago, there was, there, was so, there was obviously so many pizza places in Chicago, and there was a lot of them trying to compete on um, this idea of like, we're the most authentic, you know, jumbo slice. Well, Slice Factory like, has these like huge slices that are like literally like the size of my torso. Um, but uh, they were, all these different pizza companies were trying to claim like, we're the first, we're the most authentic, we, you know, we were around the longest, all these different things. And so Slice Factory was trying to jump on that bandwagon and kind of start making these claims to this position in the market. And what we did is we surveyed their customers and we were asking them questions around the positioning, around some of these messaging pieces that they were throwing out there. And we quickly realized that their customers didn't really care about who was most authentic or who was first to market with a jumbo slice pizza. You know, that didn't really matter to them. What mattered to them is that they could uh, get into a restaurant Theirs is a fast and casual restaurant, so they could get in, get out with a huge slice of pizza for an affordable, reasonable amount, and be out of there, and that's all that they really cared about. So Slice Factory was spending all of these marketing dollars, all of these efforts, um, you know, trying to make this position to this claim um, that they're the best, they're the first, they're the most authentic, and it was just falling on deaf ears because no one really cared about it, and other customers really cared about that. So uh, you want to make sure that the position is not going to get lost in the noise. Um, so, you know, I think Hotel Vandevoort has done a great job actually of, um, you know, kind of digging out their position in the market. Um, very unique concept. A lot of what they've done has made them stand out in this marketplace. And so uh, be thinking about what unique things about your property that you can kind of hone in on and, uh, and lean into. So some questions here that'll kind of get you started and they're on your worksheet. Um, what am I doing that no one else is? You know, is, it, is, is there something unique to what you guys do at your property that no one else is doing in your area? What are you the first in? Do you have some sort of technology or do you have some sort of offering or 
um, you know, some sort of unique feature that you're the, you're the first to have it. Um, you know, I think, I think even to the Hotel Vandevoort, the new location across the way here, uh, the rooftop bar, that was, that was a pretty um, unique first in Springfield type of a concept. Um, I don't, is there any other rooftop bar? I can't think of one. So like that, that's a great position to, to have, and that's also a good differentiation as well. Uh, what are you the best in? What are my unique differentiations? And what am I promising that no one else is promising? All right, so uh, next step in developing a brand strategy is understanding your customer. And uh, understanding your customer is, is, I think, probably one of, the, one of the most important aspects of a brand strategy. If you don't know exactly who you're talking to, how do you know what to say? I think that's a great way to kind of think about this. You know, if you, if you don't know your customer, if, you don't, if you're not in tune with them, if you don't know what they want, what they need, how are you gonna know how to talk to someone, right? You need to get to know someone before you can kind of engage with them on a deeper level. You need to get into the mind of your customer so you know what to focus on and what type of experiences are gonna resonate with them best. Um, when it comes to messaging, and, and that's a big piece of what we do at Longitude as well, is helping people define kind of a core message to deliver to their audience um, through their marketing pieces. That's a, a big piece of what we do. And um, the importance of communication and messaging, I, I like to use this analogy. So, um, I'll, Philip, is that your name? Mm -hmm. Philip. So, uh, just a, a little analogy here. I'll, I'm going to say two phrases to you, and I want you to let me know which one kind of resonates with you a little bit more. So, um, first one is, hey, uh, Philip, I have a piece of paper in my pocket. It's a shape of a rectangle. And it has my name on it, and I just really want to give it to you. Would you like it? You'd probably, you're, you look at me like you're looking like, like what? Like, <laughs> kind of a little confused, a little creeped out, maybe. Um, so that's, that's one, okay. So on the second phrase, I want to see if this resonates a little bit better. Hey, Philip, I heard it was your birthday today. I have a check in my pocket for $1,000. has my name on it. Would you like it? Yeah, yeah, of course you would. Yeah, so I was talking about the exa exactly the same thing, same piece of paper. Um, it was in my pocket. Deliver the message in entirely two different ways. And Philip, which one would you have taken me up on? Definitely. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure most of you would have as well. Um, Sorry, I don't have a check for $1,000 mm. over there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it just really shows the importance of messaging. It's, you know, um, I think a lot of people are spinning their wheels with how they're communicating with people because they don't really know. Like in this instance, if I had known that it was his birthday, then he would have felt known, and then he would have felt you know, really delighted that I was offering him a $1,000 check. So knowing your guest, acting upon that, and having ways to do that is really important. Um, so uh, when you're understanding your customer, think through um, not only who they are, but how you can engage with them as well. There's a lot of different customers you might uh, be in, you know, get to know. These are just a handful, but you, know, you might have your white collar business travelers, you may have your tourist travelers, family travelers on the weekend, you know, blue collar travelers that are maybe staying extended stays, potentially. There's a lot of different types of people that travel and they, each one has a lot of different types of needs, concerns, desires, questions. Um, and you want to make sure that you understand who they are and what they need. You want, when you speak their language, they'll know you care. And that's really what it comes down to. Again, that empathy, um, showing true hospitality. Um, part of that is just knowing how to talk to someone and how to make them feel known and make them feel cared for. So uh, this next exercise in understanding your customer, again, we'll spend a couple minutes here um, as we think through some of these questions. And there should be um, on your paper there um, a, uh, some rows and columns there. So just, you, you'll probably have more than three customers, but you can start out with three just to, to start out with and maybe just start thinking through um, what sort of concerns they might have, you know, why are they traveling, what does a great experience feel like to them um, what fears are they facing? What are some common frustrations they might face as well? Also, these might um, be separated instead of a business traveler. It could be um, the demographics of your customer as well. Could be the millennial traveler. Could be, you know, 
the boomers. It could be, um, could even be broken down a little bit um, in, into, uh, <laughs> could be broken down maybe into more like psychographic, um, you know, depictions as well. Just however uh, you think, you know, you'd best define your audience. Hope that kind of sheds some light on how to maybe think about understanding your different customers. And uh, again, towards the end here, if we have some time, uh, we'll do a little um, just time for question and answers, or if you guys want to ask any questions after this as well. Um, the last piece here um, for uh, kind of a building block for creating a brand strategy is really considering and thinking through your entire guest journey. A lot of uh, people think that of a, an experience when only someone's on your premises and you know in your doors and you can create an experience there but really there's a lot of opportunities to create a, a well-rounded guest experience elsewhere uh, we think through um, different things like the pre-visit the during the stay when they're actually in your doors and then post visit um, i think the first and the last one are often forgotten um, when it comes to specifically it comes to a guest experience um, so we want to make sure that we're kind of thinking through some actionable ways and um, strategies we can use there as well. Pre-visit, you might look at things such as, you know, the booking process. You know, direct bookings and, and increasing those are really important. Um, so how can, what's your direct booking process like on your website? Um, is it easy to use? You know, can you navigate it well? Um, is it very clear? Do you have appealing imagery? Remember that appealing imagery is a really um, important one. Same with online presence, um, your social media, you know, included in that. Are you, uh, do you have a social media content strategy, um, you know, thinking through like what types of content are going to be most engaging, most appealing, um, you know, content marketing, same thing, you know, are you posting um, valuable content that's shareable for people, uh, that's interesting, maybe you have some influencer marketing campaigns you could um, work on and, you know, getting um, some people sharing and liking um, on Instagram or whatever the you know, popular ones are now. TikTok or something? I don't know. TikTok? Is that one? Yeah. I think so. I don't know, I don't know how big it is for an influencer. Um, but yeah, think through like some different strategies about um, before someone even enters your doors, what sort of experience can you be tailoring for them? Um, you know, you're building that anticipation at that point and you're, getting, you're generating that excitement and that's even part of the experience. You know, when, even when I think about, I'm a big football fan, so I love going to Chiefs games. And one of the, the most exciting things for me is just the build up to that day. And I'm like getting ready, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm like all geared up. We go there, we're having like our, you know, tailgate parties, and I'm just like anticipating this amazing game. You know, luckily the games that I've been to, I think I have a, I have a winning record. So we'll keep that going, hopefully, but. Um, yeah, just be thinking about how, how someone can anticipate your brand before they even enter your doors. During the visit, uh, you know, obviously the easy ones here are like making the check-in experience easy. Um, again, training your staff, talking to them about how to be attentive, um, maybe putting some processes in place to, to help them feel more empowered. Like Seth mentioned, like just making them feel empowered of um, they can deliver this guest experience. Um, understanding your guests, maybe there's some technologies you can take advantage of to really know, um, get to know your guests better um, while they're staying there. Or maybe it's just more, just a matter of really just communicating with them, talking with them, uncovering those stones to understand your guests. Um, offering local experiences and engaging them that way. These are just a list of just some ideas. Um, there's a lot of other th things that might come to mind um, when you're talking about in your during visit. Um, so uh, post-visit, you know, just a simple, like, thank you. Thank you for staying, uh, whether that's done as they're leaving or whether that's done in an email maybe a week or two later after their stay, just saying a quick thank you. Maybe even send them a handwritten note. Um, those are all uh, great ways to just let them know that you, you uh, recognize them and you, you're aware of them. Email marketing, um, following up with people, having campaigns to kind of stay up to date with your uh, people who you have their email captured. Um, social media, just keeping it fresh, interesting. I, I still follow a lot of hotels uh, that I've stayed at, a lot of other places I've stayed that just like, I just follow them because I love it. I love seeing their content. And I've maybe only been there once in my whole life, but I just love staying engaged. And if I ever am in that area, I'm probably going to go back to that same place. So it's really important to keep your social media updated as well for your 
uh, for new guests and for existing guests. Um, also, just kind of follow-ups, maybe shoot them a call. If you guys, I'm sure most of you guys have some sort of CRM, you can maybe just make reminders and give someone a, an in-person call every now and then. Just something simple like that um, can be a really great way to, to create that guest experience. Um, also, a, a big one um, is just responding to bad reviews and having a strategy around reputation management. Um, hopefully, you've taken care of a lot of the issues as they've come up on your property during the stay. Uh, but if not, if there's a bad review, you need to have a strategy in place to make sure you're responding properly um, to the bad reviews as well. So um, this is our final exercise. Uh, if you guys want to maybe give it a little thought here, and we'll discuss. I'd love to hear some of your guys' ideas if you have any ideas that weren't on this list. This is just a starting point. Um, but be thinking about maybe some pre-visit, during-visit, and post-visit um, ideas and, and strategies you guys could put into place. And I'd love to hear if anybody comes up with something Interesting. Well, again, I just want to say, um, you know, the the tactics without strategies fail, and hopefully we've kind of covered um, at least some of the initial building blocks of how you can develop a brand strategy for your your property and for your team. And um, I really, it is really my desire that you guys would s succeed in everything you guys are doing, and that your hotels would really um, benefit from um, some of the things we discussed today and some of the things you guys are be learning uh, today and tomorrow. Um, if you want to stay in touch with Longitude, uh, you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook and on our website as well. I really appreciate um, being invited again, Lindsay. And uh, if you guys have any questions, you can ask uh, Dustin. He's right back there. Wave your hand, Dustin. Um, and Chris as well. He's, um, he's one of our content co contributors, and uh, he, he has a lot of knowledge in the hotel industry as well, especially when it comes to revenue management. Just He has, he has a lot of ideas. Um, so feel free to talk to one of us, and uh, love to let you pick our brains or just chat. And uh, thank you very much, Lindsay, again for the invite. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.